is part 14 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss the risks of implementing I extensible data object interface. This is continuation to part 13, so please watch part 13 before proceeding. In part 13 of this video series, we discussed how to implement I extensible data object interface to preserve unknown elements during serialization and deserialization of data contracts. The downside of implementing I extensible data object interface is that it carries the risk of denial of service attack. Since the extension data is stored in memory, the attacker may flood the server with requests that contain large number of unknown elements which can lead to system out of memory and denial of service. So the next question of how to turn off I extensible data object feature arises. One way to turn off I extensible data object feature is to remove the implementation of I extensible data object interface from all the data contracts. This should work fine as long as we have few data contracts on which I extensible data object interface is implemented. If you look at the employee service that we have been working with, this employee service has got two operation contracts, get employee and save employee. Both of these operation contracts are making use of this employee data contract. And notice that this employee data contract implements I extensible data object interface. Now, if we want to disable the support for I extensible data object, one way is to remove the implementation from this data contract. And we also need to remove you know, the property implementation. Now, this will work fine for us just because we have only one data contract that implements I extensible data object interface. But just imagine if we have a large number of data contracts within our application that provides implementation for I extensible data object, that means we have to go to each and every data contract and remove the implementation, which is tedious and error prone. So the WCF team at Microsoft has thought about this and has provided us an option to enable or disable support for I extensible data object feature through service behavior configuration. So we basically include service behaviors element, give the behavior a meaningful name, and then use this attribute ignore extension data object um, of data contract serializer. So set this to true. It's going to ignore the extension data. And using configuration to enable or disable support is much better rather than changing the application code. That's because if we change the application code, we need to rebuild our application and redeploy it to the production server. On the other hand, if we change the configuration, we don't have to rebuild and redeploy. We just need to stop the service and start it once again. So using configuration is much better. So with this configuration option, later if we want to enable support for I extensible data object, all we need to do is set this attribute to false and we are done. We don't have to go back to each and every data contract and then provide implementation for I extensible data object interface. Okay, so at the moment, if you look at this employee data contract, it's providing the implementation for I extensible data object, which means the service is going to preserve the unknown elements for clients. And then when the response is sent back, those unknown elements are also sent, you know, in the XML that is sent back to the client. Okay, so let's actually look at that in action. Let's run the service host and let's go ahead and run the client as well. So let's get this employee one and let's specify male as gender for one em employee one and let's save this employee with ID 101, save employee. So employee is saved. Now let's get rid of this gender and look at this. When we get employee, that unknown element gender is also retrieved back. And if you look at the database table, so 101, look at that, there is no gender, but then the service is retaining that with an extension data property and then returning that back to the client. All right, now let's see how to disable support for I extensible data object using service behavior configuration. So we go to the configuration file of our service and we come to this behaviors element, which has got service behaviors within that. And we already have a behavior that enables metadata exchange. So here, let's add data contract serializer. And then 
specify the attribute ignore extension data object and set that to true so we are going to ignore extension data so no matter you know how many unknown elements are there in the request that's coming to the service the service is now going to ignore those extension I mean those unknown elements at the service side and then when the response is sent to the client you know those unknown elements are lost okay so let's go ahead and stop the host that's already running let's rerun the host and let's come to the client now let's get employee one once again and let's save this employee using ID 102 so save employee and look at this when we get this employee look at that gender is lost because we disabled um, support for I extensible data object feature using service behavior configuration and if you want to do it programmatically without removing the implementation of I extensible data object another way is to use the service behavior attribute on the service itself and then specify that named parameter ignore extension data object so if you look at our employee service we are already using the service behavior attribute to set the instance context mode now you know look at this version of the service behavior attribute you know there's a property called ignore extension data object so we can specify it programmatically as well okay so we can either do it you know using the service behavior attribute programmatically or using configuration using service behaviors element now what actually happens when we set this attribute you know to true either through configuration or by using this service behavior attribute basically the deserializer will not populate the extension data property okay so when the client sends a request obviously the request is coming in an XML format okay so when that request is received at the service the deserializer at the service needs to reconstruct employee object from that XML so the deserializer will come into action and then when it finds any unknown elements since we have turned off the support for extension data the deserializer is now going to ignore those unknown elements it will not store the unknown elements within that extension data property so if you look at the employee data contract so this employee data contract has got this extension data property so let's actually close the host that's already running and put a breakpoint within this save employee and then let's go ahead and run this okay the service is running with debugging enable let's go ahead and run the client as well let's get employee 1 and let's save this employee with ID 201 so let's click save employee look at that it comes into save employee and if you look at extension data look at that the members are basically null so the deserializer which has reconstructed this employee object you know ignored those unknown elements okay on the other hand if we enable support you know that extension data property of this employee object would have been populated with the unknown elements that are received at the service all right that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day